that old in mind. Hello, how are you doing? You're watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck. You could be watching any show in the world, but you're watching us and we're thankful. Thank you for watching this show. Uh, we just want you to really center yourself today. Um, we, we live in a, in a beautiful country. Uh, we've had some ups and downs. Uh, but really, really, I want you, I don't want to use the word or, the, or the, the phrase thoughts and prayers, but send your energy, send your energy out to the nation and those who are, who are hurting, uh, those who are struggling with, with the ups and downs of what's been happening lately. Um, and that's where you want your heart to be. You know, this is a faith-based program, a love-based program, and we really want you to just squeeze your heart and squeeze out love this week, this month and for the rest of the year. Squeeze out, love the unlovable. Love, somebody loved me, so I want you to do the same. The book talks about, uh, there's a story in the book about a young man, uh, and we don't really know all the details, you know, I try to color in some of the details, but he fell on the road. Uh, the book says he was, he was beaten and robbed, he fell on the road, and, and it says that a, a priest walked by looked at him and kept going. And then a Levite walked by, looked at him and kept going. And then what they call this young man, uh, the good Samaritan, got off of his beast. I don't know if it was a, a camel, a horse, a dromedary, I don't know. But he got down off of his beast, bandaged the man, put him on the beast, took him into town, put him in a nice hotel and said, when I come back, any other bills, I'll take care of them. Uh, and that story, that story helps me to build what my special guest today, because he's a man of compassion, he's a man of concern, he's a man that's gotten down off of his big red wagon and helped people that have been hurt on the side of the road. Chief Kevin Taylor, the Montecito Fire District. Sir, how are you doing? Doing fantastic, thank, thank you. Thank you for being on the show tonight. It, we've talked about the, the, some of the things that are going on in the country today, and yeah. the country's been going back and forth. They've been having this debate the, the left's been going this way, the right's been going this way, the blue and the red, they really don't know. But help us settle this argument once and for all, stick a fork in it. What's best, East Coast or West Coast rap? Oh, I think that you got to go with East Coast rap. <laughs> East Coast right? rap. Don't kinda, you think? Okay, okay. I think if you go all the way back to the beginning, you got to go with East wow, Coast rap. you will rap. go there, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Plus, I'm sure that that's a little bit different than what you normally get since we're here on the West Coast. So why be the same as everybody different else? Different yeah, flavor. different flavor. Different I'm thinking flavor. of the... Uh, I can't remember what they call them, but when they have the rap showdowns, those definitely wow. started on the East Coast, right? So, yeah. I can see you break dancing right now. I can I, see you spinning one. I can't do it. I can't do it, but I love watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Thank you so much. I have, I have so many questions to ask you. Um, um, be, being the fire chief, um, so I'm, I'm a swimmer. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I was a lifeguard, and my brother, Merritt Miles, love him dearly. He worked for uh, L.A. County yeah, Fire, uh -huh. and he worked there for years. And the difference between me and him, because he, you know, he's not. First of all, he's not as good looking as I was. <laughs> Who else? Nobody else is as good looking as you are, Chuck. <laughs> but he, he was a firefighter, and he would, he would, he would run into burning buildings to help people. I'll dive into some cold water to go get, to, get, to to help somebody that's drowning, but I'm not running into a burning building. That's a special kind of guy that does that. What is it? Are you cuckoo for Cocoa Pops or just your compassion for people? Why does a person run into a burning building to help someone? Well, you know, I would suggest, Chuck, for yeah. the same reason mm -hmm. that someone jumps into the ice cold Pacific with sharks and other risks to rescue somebody. Yeah. And the reason is that you care about the person that you're trying to rescue yeah. more than you care about yourself, so, right? Yeah. So. When you got the job to be a lifeguard, the same way when I yeah. got the job to be a firefighter, the same way all the firefighters that I work with in Santa Barbara County and at Montecito Fire Department, they made a commitment, mm -hmm. right? They said, hey, my career, my chosen path is to put others before myself. And when somebody's in harm's way, just like all first responders, I'm gonna do what I can to actually go make a difference in their life. Wow. Yeah special yeah it's That's, no different than what you do every day yeah, yeah. The, you know they try to put this term this phrase a little four-letter word and I, I try not to use four-letter words but uh -huh. um, hero sure 
And most guys, most firefighters, most police officers, you throw that word at them and they're like, no, nah, I'm just, it's just a job. I'm just doing my job. And to me, that's the humbling side of a firefighter. Because they will, I'm not a hero. I'm just, I'm just doing what I was trained to do. And, and that's, that's a humbling thing to me. Um, did you always want to be a firefighter? You just, I did not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, uh, I was in college at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. I mm -hmm. wanted to be a veterinarian. Wow. Um, I was getting ready to start my third year of college, and I ran out. My college fund ran, ran dry, mm -hmm. needed a summer job. I got a summer job as a firefighter, wow. and uh, it was immediate. You know, the third day that I was on the job, my career path um, took a right turn, 180 degrees, and... Mm -hmm. I started training to become a firefighter. You know, first uh, went to fire academy, got my EMT, mm -hmm. went to paramedic school, got a paramedic license, and then lo and behold, was fortunate enough to land this wonderful job in the city of Paso Robles as a firefighter in uh, way back in 1991. Wow! Yeah, you don't even look that old. Get, Get out, out of here, old Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long time ago. That's, yeah. like, that's a long time ago. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. been a wonderful career. Wow. Wow. So that's how I got on the job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you, so, I, so what? Explain this to me. I was reading. I was doing some homework. Yeah. And I don't really know all the details. So maybe you can help me. Type three incident management team. Am mm -hmm. I saying that right? That is. That's what, accurate. What is, what is that? What so is, that is uh, our crown jewel in Santa Barbara County. Okay. It's the, the finest example that I can provide you of law enforcement, public health, and fire department collaboration. Okay. It's a group of leaders mm -hmm. from every organization in Santa Barbara County, Lompoc Fire Department, Santa Maria Fire Department, the County Fire Department, Santa Barbara City Fire Department, Montecito Fire, mm -hmm. and Carp Summerland. Mm -hmm and the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office, we all got together and formed this Type 3 Incident Management Team. Okay. And what it is, is it's uh, a group of people that comes into larger incidents and actually manages them. So mm -hmm. we provide uh, operational expertise, command direction, logistical support, everything that that community that's having the emergency needs to have a successful outcome to the incident. I had no idea when we were putting this together back in the very beginning of 2015 mm -hmm. that Montes the community of Montecito would be such a great beneficiary of this team, mm -hmm. but it certainly has turned out that way, right? So in Santa Barbara County, we've managed incidents in the in Lompoc area, mm -hmm. on the Mesa, mm -hmm. at the Holiday Fire, the Ray Fire, the Sherpa Fire, mm -hmm. um, had a little bit of a hand in the Thomas Fire, and then of course we were pre-positioned before the one nine debris flow and then six times after that in preparation um, you know for those high intensity short duration rainfall events wow. so the team's owned by the Santa Barbara County Fire Chiefs Association mm -hmm. it's a legitimate team it's recognized statewide mm -hmm. and they were actually our team was deployed last September mm -hmm. uh, back to Virginia for flooding to help some of our neighbors on the East Coast which might have something to do with my answer to your first question <laughs> <laughs> They're ready for it. Huh? Wow. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what the Type Three Incident Management Team and, is. And and when was that? When was that formed? Give me that. In time Santa date. Barbara County, mm -hmm. right at the beginning of 2015, 2015. was our official wow. um, blessing by the County Fire Chiefs wow. Association wow. to put ourselves available and actually start responding and, to and incidents. And you are one of the founding members. Yeah. Of that. Brought, so I want to say your brainchild, but something you no, just felt. Yeah, I was just one mm -hmm. of several people mm -hmm. um, in the community. So Woody Enos, mm -hmm. Lee Waldron, um, Eric Lee. Peterson. Yeah, yeah. really great mm -hmm. people that also recognized that there was a need mm -hmm. and uh, that we should do something about it. So at our first meeting, we had six people mm -hmm. um, that attended. A full team is 14. Wow. A full, full team is mm -hmm. 24. Mm -hmm. So we were very short, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but through the years yeah. and all the activations at the last team meeting, there were a little over 50 people present. Wow. So it's a it's a great success story. It's really a great tool for it our is. community. Yeah. It's it's amazing how that group of six people had the vision to set something like that in place and be ready for what this this part of the world had to deal with uh, on on that on that dreadful morning. Um, and and I, I I use that term dreadful, but I think out of every out of every bad thing, there's always 
um, a daisy that, that blooms in the midst of that. And I think that's, that's what I got out of it more than anything, is in the midst of all that, and you know, I, I lost some, some loved ones there that I didn't, I used to work at the Montecito Y. And so I had a couple of good friends that I lost, Sister Josie, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so yes, yeah, so, but I, I look at, at at how that how those things bring a community together, right. and and you can really feel um, you can you can see the neighborly love grew out of that. When in the past, where you know oh, I'm too busy to, to talk to my neighbor, and now people make that attempt to like, hey we aren't that much apart you know even though you make a whole lot and you don't make a little it it, it in the mist when the rain is coming down and the mess is going down it's like we, yeah so people are people, people right yeah, 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 and uh yeah. it so it was a as a horrific event we lost 23 very yeah. important members yeah. of our community Mercy. We will never get them back, yeah. right? We need to honor and remember yes. them as we continue, but mm -hmm. we also need to recognize what that did for our community, mm -hmm. what you described as mm -hmm. the daisy. Mm -hmm. And wow. you know, as the new person in town, I, I started there in February of 2015, mm -hmm. it was a job, right? I was working at a job, a great mm -hmm. organization, working with great people, mm -hmm. but I wasn't connected to the community that wow. I was connected you know, in Paso Robles. I grew up there, born and raised, mm -hmm. went away to college, came back, got mm -hmm. hired there, mm -hmm. spent 25 years in the community. I was very deeply, deeply rooted, yeah. knew everybody. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that in Montecito. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that our community had that, but after the debris flow, what you noticed, I yeah. definitely yeah. felt, yeah. right? So yeah. there was the yeah. sense of, uh, and there still is, the yeah. sense of we're all in this together. Yeah. Yeah. It's a neighbor helping neighbor challenge. Yeah. And it continues to be a neighbor helping neighbor challenge yeah. as we seek opportunities to make our community more resilient. Yeah. In other words, uh, have a, an ability after our next disaster to recover, to get back to normal yeah. even sooner. Yeah. So it's a wonderful community made up of a bunch of wonderful people mm -hmm. that really, really care deeply about that community. Mm -hmm. So it's a great place to, to live and work. Fantastic. Wow. Just wonderful. Um, I have so many questions. So I always, yeah. I always share this with, with all my guests. This is part one of a 15-part series. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I understood. Because an hour is really, is, uh, uh, someone of, of your caliber, is, an hour is really not long enough to give it. So um, fi you, have, you have a bachelor's degree in fire admin and then a master's in, in emergency management. Um, so I so so that really humbled me because in, in my house uh, when when my wife screams and there, there's a spider that's an emergency and I gotta go that's, that's emergency I gotta, in my house I gotta too, go <laughs> match that thing I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why my wife is married to me because I'm not afraid of spiders. <laughs> your wife, wife, your wife, how long? Just, um, your wife, Joe. How, uh -huh. how so I'm getting nosy. How long? That's oh, okay. Yeah. How long have you guys been? So we've been together for 30 years, married oh, wow. for uh, wow. 28 years. Oh, wow. You yeah. Lucky rascal. I huh? am incredibly lucky. I can tell you that you and I wouldn't be sitting here visiting right now if it wasn't for her. There's uh, there's absolutely. So if I'm not married to her, I'm a. Uh, I'm working winters at a ski resort and summers as a seasonal firefighter. Right. So. Yeah. She really helps yeah. ground me, provide yeah. me with direction. Is not afraid to tell me when I'm off the, off the right path. Wow. And it's we have a wonderful partnership. Luckiest man in the world. Yeah. Well, yes, that makes me the second, second luckiest yeah. man in the world. Because, um, you know, we were sharing before the show about how, how my path led to Montecito. Right. And, um, I, I've I've been been lucky, and I say I'm. I'm the second luckiest guy in the world. Second luckiest guy. <laughs> but when we came to town almost 12 years ago, other than my brother being a firefighter, right? My wife had nothing to do. We didn't know anything about firefighter. And then she started working with Chief Mingi over at at CARP. Right. And then and then and then she started. She transferred over and started working with. Uh, and, and so so let me go back. Let me back, let me get my money share. Honey, I'm trying to stay out of trouble tonight. <laughs> she says, Chuck, don't get me fired. 
So, uh, so this morning when I went to the office, I yeah. said, uh, hey, I'm going to be on Chuck's show tonight. And she goes, I told him never to call you. Never. I told him, don't you get me fired. I said, well, Joyce, you know, there's absolutely nothing you could do that ever would get you fired. So Joyce is, uh, so we're very, we're blessed to have Joyce yeah. as part of our team, yeah. right? Yeah. She's our administrative assistant. Yeah. And uh, in addition to being a good human being, yeah. right, which is super, yeah. super important in a work environment, yeah. she's just wonderful and thoughtful and, and uh, helps keep the keep us on track as well, right? Not afraid to speak her mind and it's <laughs> as you know. <laughs> super, at your boy. <laughs> okay. Super, you super guys important. have that shot with with, 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 with Chief and, and that lovely little lady. I gotta <laughs> I gotta get the guys in the yeah. booth. I don't know if they popped they may have popped it up already. Okay. Um, this was at an at, at an awards um, um, ceremony you guys were having a few short months ago. Okay. Uh, they're pulling it up. They're they're gonna pull it up. Let's see if they can pull it up. I'm gonna, okay. They're pulling it up. Yeah. And, and and so I was watching at that at that that bank. And I've been to the to the station a couple of times. Right. And and when I walk in there, I always see. I always feel how the, that the family. It's not really a fire station. It's really a. It's really a, a fire home. It's a fire house. It's a fire home. It's right. a fire house. Yeah, it's a fire house, but it's a fire home because the family gets there. And I never felt, of course, when you know, when you say you're, you're so here, here I go again. Yeah. As a as a man, as a husband, as a guy, you know, girls love firefighters, right? <laughs> so, so I'm like, I gotta send my wife to work with these guys. These guys are hanging around my wife all day. And so I said, but but I I. During the, I felt I felt she was safer there than at home with me. Yeah. Right. And so look, well, the, so look at you yeah. guys. Yeah. Right That's I, awesome. She, she felt I felt safer knowing she was at work. Right. Right. Because I knew if it goes down. So it's so it's hard to uh, so this is really one of the best aspects of our job, right? Mm -hmm. It's really it, mm -hmm. so you kind of get emotional when you talk about it a little bit. So I'll, yeah. I'm gonna do my best yeah. not to get emotional. Yeah. But one of the things that really drew me to Montecito and the fire department mm -hmm. back in 2015, when I was contemplating leaving this mm -hmm. long-term position in Paso Robles to make a you know a significant move, picked yeah. up yeah. my family and yeah. moved them. Yeah. Um, was just that. Mm -hmm. You feel it immediately yeah. when you walk through the door of that fire station. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this sense of family yeah. where it's not lip service, yeah. right? A lot yeah. of fire departments, a lot of police departments, yeah. first responders yeah. Yeah. say family first, right? right. right. But their actions yeah. don't yeah. really yeah. match it's that. money first, yeah, they're trying to exactly. make that check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it, for, you know, for some reason we have the uh, the most exceptional group of men and women yes. that work there yes. that are um, that really believe in the mission and believe in service to the community and and out of that comes that relationship that you feel when you walk mm -hmm. in the door mm -hmm. it's really uh, it's exceptional it's mm -hmm. astounding it's uh, you feel it every day it never goes away yeah. Yeah. right you walk into work um, whether it's your first day or your last day and yeah. you feel very welcome yeah. 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 I, I, I felt that there um, even, <laughs> even uh, we did. Uh, I, I, it's it's hard to surprise my wife. It's, you did, it's, though. It's very, <laughs> you did. It's very. It's very. It's very. And so I was able to pull off a surprise birthday party for her there. And and I, I remember uh, when we did it. We did ice cream, the, the right. whole cake and I stuff was like there, that. I remember. And, and all the guys were around there, and her jupe whooping up. She walks in, oh, surprise, surprise, surprise. And she was so happy. To, and she's looking around the room. She's hugging all the firefighters. She's hugging all the crew. And she finally looks, and she sees me sitting in the corner. And she's like, oh, you pulled that off. But it was because she was really with her family. I didn't even have to be in the room. She loved on that group. And and that's that's a special, because I think when you, when you talk about people who put their lives on the line yeah. daily, daily there is you have to trust the person you work next to whether it be in administration or the guy that you know the janitor that comes in or the guy that cuts the does the gardening that's a family and that's what I that's what I honor most about about the Montecito Fire District um, it's not the fire department it's the fire district okay? correct well yeah correct. so yeah the we uh, semantics yeah semantics, when you talk yeah. about the mm -hmm. the policy level right mm -hmm. the board of directors the the mm -hmm. five elected 
uh, members of mm -hmm. our community mm -hmm. that are responsible for our policy direction. It's mm -hmm. the Montecito Fire Protection District. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you talk about the firefighters, the people that respond yeah. to the call, yeah. that's definitely yeah. the Montecito yeah. Fire Department. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. take a lot of pride in that. Good guy. Sometimes, because, you know, I, I recognize you guys, when you're in your uniform, I recognize it. But every once in a while I'll be out and about somewhere at, at you know, walking State Street, and one of the firefighters will, hey, Chuck, Chuck. hey. And I'm like, I know this guy, <laughs> but I don't know where I know him from. And then Joyce will tell me, yeah, we saw such and such, say they saw you. And I'm like, oh, that's who that guy was. And right. So it's amazing how, how they, really, they really pull that in. Well, you, as the spouse, you're part of the family, right? If you haven't figured that out I yet, am. that's... Uh, and I feel that. Yeah, that's part that's of the amazing. deal. That's how that's it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are, we are. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm grateful that you guys love on an old mm -hmm. scrappy dude like me. <laughs> um, you, you, you started off in, in Paso. Right. You come down here, you get involved. Um, did you ever? Did you always want to be the chief, or you just it's just something that just you just? Yeah, have, I mean, how how? So I I've kind of always patterned my career after. Uh, so I, I was a baseball player, right? Like mm -hmm. you were a swimmer. I coached mm -hmm. baseball, high school mm -hmm. baseball, and pass mm -hmm. rebels, and we used to tell the players that never take your own jersey off, right? Make somebody else take it off. And what we were trying to communicate that to them was. You're playing this wonderful game, mm -hmm. and we want you to play it as long as you can, because once wow. you can't play anymore, you got to go out in the real world wow. and get a real job, yeah. right? Wow. And so I always tried to apply that to myself and my career, and mm -hmm. the way that I interpreted it in my career was never close a door, right? So I, w I was always preparing myself for the next opportunity in the promotional ladder, okay. and the door would be open. So if I wanted to, um, yeah. if I wanted to compete for that position, I had satisfied all the requirements, and I could walk through the door. And yeah. if I didn't want to compete, yeah. that was okay as well. Yeah. Um, so that was one uh, one of my considerations. The other considerations on how high I wanted to go was my family, mm. right? So. Um, the same way that when we talk to our staff, we talk about family first. We try to live what we're what we say, yeah. Yeah. and so my you know my son and wife are my first priority. So um, we didn't move down here until after uh, my son Jake had graduated high school, and then uh, I wanted to make sure that if I was going to compete for the fire chief job, that my wife was all in because ah. I certainly yeah. knew that I wouldn't be successful yeah. Yeah. without yeah. her. Without that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so fortunately, um, yeah. from a career standpoint, yeah. the opportunity presented itself, and I was yeah. well prepared yeah. um, to, to compete for the position. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and you, you, you're such a, 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 a likable young man. Thank you. Um, a educated and a teachable young man. And I think, I think I, that's one thing I picked up about you, that you're still hungry to learn. You're still humble <laughs> enough to... to to humble yourself, I, I gotta share this story because it it, it, it it reminds me of something, and it, it's not of a fire chief level, but it is. It's a sign that lets lets other people know. So I was I was um, uh, uh, a senior lifeguard at a pool in in L.A. Okay. And and I I got to work one day, three or four in the afternoon, uh, and I worked the night shift, just nights and weekends. And so I got to the pool one day, and my boss was sitting in his office, and he's talking to somebody who I didn't know. And so I walk in, you got to, you know, the time card is on yeah. his desk. And so you got to walk in, do your time card. But as I walked in, I noticed that his trash can was full. And there was some trash around the trash can. And so I didn't even want to reach across and punch in or do anything. I just walked in, saw the trash was full, picked up the trash, emptied the trash, got back with a broom, swept around it, and put the trash can back. Then I, you know, went, washed my hands, came back, boom, punched in, went to work. And as I walked out, I heard the young man say that he was talking to me. He says, I didn't know you guys had janitors here. And I kept walking, and, he says, and my boss says, no, that's, that's my senior lifeguard. He says, oh, oh, wait a minute. Well, he's got, we've got some, some other facilities he could manage because we're looking for guys that will go that extra step and humble themselves enough to even pick up the trash because so, that shows ownership. And so you are a guy that showed ownership. That's what that says, to work your way up in that position, you, you show ownership. And that's how that to me that's the sign of a great leader. Um, are you willing to do? When I first started pastoring, Pastor Reese, God bless him, he says, Chuck, in in pastoral ministry, you've got to be willing 
and Abel to preach a sermon and clean toilets and sing a hymn all in the same day. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, I get you. You have to be able to, yeah. so to that, do it all. That's our job, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, it doesn't matter what, there's no job too large right. and there's no job too small. Right. And as long as you, you know, one of my philosophies is, as long as you don't lose sight of that, mm -hmm. then you'll continue to be successful. Yeah. Because there's, when we start out as firefighters, you know, there's certain tasks and responsibilities that you have. And mm -hmm. as you move up the ladder, those tasks and responsibilities become less manual, mm -hmm. but much more complex, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that doesn't relieve you of this responsibility to still be able to accomplish what you described as emptying the trash, yeah. 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 right? Yeah. And there's no, uh, what, one of the things that we see is, uh, you know, hey, as I achieve these levels in the organization, I'm better, I'm smarter, right. I'm yeah. more yeah. experienced. Yeah. 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 None of those things yeah. are true, right. Right. right? The only thing that's true is that you have two ears and one mouth, and if you want to be successful, you should spend twice as much listening, especially at the lowest levels yeah. in the organization yeah. or the community as you should speaking, mm -hmm. because they probably, if they have the gumption mm -hmm. to speak, they have something worthwhile to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And so we certainly, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge proponent yeah. of that. It's like, hey, fellas, yeah. two and one, <laughs> right? right? There's, a like, There's a reason. Yeah. 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 So yeah. somebody's uh, station in the community mm -hmm. or their rank in the organization, mm -hmm. it doesn't preclude them from being a problem solver right. or, from, or for right. having right. The, uh, the cure for yeah. whatever's yeah. illing yeah. us yeah. out yeah. the time. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't listen, yeah. then you've missed a great opportunity. And especially if you're so arrogant, you don't listen just because of who they are right. or right. their rank. Right. Right. I've learned to uh, listen uh, to people who, first of all, because I, I can be a little arrogant. I don't know if you know, sometimes I can. <laughs> I just never come across. I never noticed. But I've, I've 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 learned to just really really pay attention to those who I who I I get my the chip on my shoulder. And I look look down. And I was like, uh, there's a reason why I'm looking down. On them, but there's also something that they're they they have to share with me. I don't know what that thing is, but they have to humble me, and I'm waiting for it to come out. So I'm I'm in and whenever I look down at someone, I like ah anticipation. They're going to they're going to humble you. So that so I'm <coughs> waiting for it. I describe yeah, that yeah, as the yeah. karma sword, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. There's so so every every person in our society has something to offer. Every mm -hmm. person in our society yeah. is somebody's son or daughter. Yeah. Yeah. They may be somebody's sibling. They might be somebody's yeah. mother or father. Yeah. And so they have great value to all those people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I I try to stay grounded. Whenever I'm looking that way at mm -hmm. somebody, mm -hmm. right? Which I'm human, just like you. Yeah. I do the same yeah. thing. I think to myself, uh, you know, this guy is just trying to provide for it. He's doing the exact same thing that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. We have different jobs, yeah, yeah. but at the end of the day, we're just trying to provide for our families, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. In the way that we know how, the way yeah. that we think is best. And so you gotta respect that, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, That's good stuff. deep thoughts. It's, it's very interesting <laughs> though, as, as you sit yeah. and you evaluate. So I'm yeah. very introspective, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. My goal is to always improve. I want to be a good human. You know, at the end of the day, I would love to be a good human being, and I'm not yeah, there yet, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, you're not. No, I have. <laughs> I have a saying. On, so here's how serious I take this, Chuck. In my office, um, I, my personal motto is: Do your best, do what's right, and treat others as you'd like to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I've had people come into my office and say, uh, "Hey, you know, you didn't do that in this situation." I go, "You know what? You're exactly right." I go, first off, thanks for reminding me." Yeah. Yeah. And second off, I just I need to put you on notice that as soon as I meet that, mm -hmm. you won't see me anymore because my work is complete. Complete, yeah. right? Oh, in yeah, other words, yeah. uh, and I don't see that in the near future, <laughs> right? Because I'm yeah, a flawed yeah, human being. But do. man, yeah. I am trying. Yeah, that's so, good stuff. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, you know, we, we we always learn. I try to learn from you know my young kids. My kids always teach me stuff. They, uh -huh. they teach me a phenomenal stuff. And you're you yeah. are. You're, you're mentoring young young firefighters and some old parts too. Yeah, you got some old absolutely. you got some old dogs. Yeah, there. I call them mature, <laughs> mature, <laughs> mature. Yeah, or highly experienced. Highly experienced. Yeah, you got to spin it. It's always positive. <laughs> Opportunities, no threats, Chuck. 
one of my, I have this thing we call, we call moving the boards, yeah. where every kid has to get a stack of kickboards, and they swim down, or they kick a board down, yeah. they swim back, get another board, and we just move boards, and then we'd switch the strokes up. And then I was doing this one day, I told him, hey, you gotta stack your boards, they gotta be neat, stack them. And one kid had his boards all over the place. He was just, yeah. I said, you're supposed to stack your boards. And he says, coach, they're abstract. <laughs> Like, yes, sir, you are correct. And I, I couldn't it. argue and with it's that. A, it looks nice, too. It's not bad. <laughs> but it made me think, I was like, oh, okay. We do have to learn to look at the other person's perspective. We have to look at it through their lens, you know. So, oh, yeah. In all yeah, things, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, Especially, yeah. so in mentoring, yes. the yeah. only way yeah. that you can be successful with mentoring yeah. is to look at it yeah. through the person that you're trying to help's right. lens. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. your view is clouded, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. The worst it's thing amazing. that you, yeah, the very worst thing that you can try to do is to make another you. Yeah. There's plenty of, well, yeah. we don't need another Chuck, or yeah. we certainly don't need another yeah. Kevin. Yeah. 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 But we do need the next the fire next chief, yeah. right? right? We do need the next person to lead your congregation. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the, you know, what my, I strongly believe that we don't want that next person to be like me. We totally, want, yeah. yeah, we want them yeah. to be yeah. like them. A, a little, we try to sp sprinkle a little of our flavor around, you know, like, yeah. like grandma would say, a pinch of this and a pinch of that. Right. And so we want to teach a pinch of this. So. You know, have, have you ever had, so, oh, okay, so, it, it, I, once again, I've got a bunch of loaded questions. Yeah, that's okay. M my brother, as a firefighter, he would come and he would tell me all these gross stories about stuff. He was a paramedic as well. Yeah, firefighter. yeah, yeah. The, the grossest stories about stuff he had to deal with. Sure. And one thing that we, I deal with, uh, with we, we have a lot of, we have a, a homeless situation. And you, you, you bring these guys, and they, they're re repeat offenders. They go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but in the midst of, of, of you working with these guys, sometimes sometimes you get some hilarious stories, right? So as a firefighter, I know you deal with a lot of, you know, you know sure. the, 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 what's the funniest, the funniest thing that's happened as a firefighter? What's the, I know, you can go on. So, so there's hundreds, right? So I'll share one, uh, a personal one. So I'm working in Paso Robles. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the very early 90s. And I uh, was responded to a structure fire, arrived at scene and, Sure enough, there's a lot of smoke coming out of the house, and so uh, we stretch a line in. There's reportedly somebody trapped. Mm -hmm. uh, we go through the home. There is somebody that's unconscious mm -hmm. on uh, on a uh, like a, a recliner in the mm -hmm. living room. Okay. We pick that person up and we take them out, and then we start doing our paramedic thing on mm -hmm. the lawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, shortly after we get them out, I start thinking to myself, you know, it it wasn't very hot in that house that was on fire. Mm -hmm. Yet there was a lot of smoke pouring out of it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it wasn't hot is because that was exhaust from a vehicle. And so the person had a, attempted suicide. I'm happy to say that they survived the event mm -hmm. um, by uh, turning their vehicle on in the garage and they mm -hmm. had all their mm -hmm. the doors open in the house but all the windows closed. So once it filled up with smoke, the house okay. looked like it was on fire. Okay. And so, um, hmm. You, uh, you, you're in one mode, you're in rescue mode, you're gonna get this guy and sure enough you find him and you're elated, right? It's what, why we took the job basically was to help other people and, and no, it, it was not a fire. Mm -hmm. Second story is a uh, mannequin, right? Every firefighter paramedic has a mannequin story mm -hmm. where uh, you're at the fire and there's a rescue problem and you go in to conduct the rescue and you find the person that's down and you bring them out and they're a mannequin. Right, not an actual human. It's yeah. a little bit embarrassing, yeah. right? You would think a guy would be able to tell the, the difference, tell difference. Yeah. Yeah. between, and it's also in the early '90s, wow. right? Yeah. Uh, between wow. a mannequin and not a mannequin. <laughs> so, it's hey, we yeah. all have our moments, That's right? right? You yeah. get yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. you get totally locked in, and yeah. hey, this is what it is, yeah. Yeah. and your tunnel vision yeah. at that moment yeah. early in my career. And, yeah. 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 and Neither time was that the case. That, that's because it's a that's a life and death judgment. Mm -hmm. The wrong judgment, someone, you can, and then you know. So yeah. that that's a lot of pressure. Um, how how is what's what's in place for the firefighters after they deal with those type of? Uh, there's a de-stress yeah. thing. I mean, how yeah. does a firefighter like? I just did this terrible, you know, this crazy thing happen. How do I? 
you know, mm-hmm. like other other than you know, I go and I turn down a, you know an eight pack of beer, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> what is what is do how do you, how do the guys de stress from stuff like that? So first and foremost is their family, mm-hmm. right? And by family, I mean the people that are on the engine company with mm-hmm. them. So everybody that was at the incident went through the same thing, mm-hmm. and so their first their primary coping mechanism is to sit at the coffee table and talk about what occurred. Wow. Um, early in my career, that was the only uh, alternative. Mm. Fortunately, now we have wonderful programs um, like At Ease and others mm-hmm. that we can offer to our firefighters uh, completely confidentially um, for them to get the help that they need. So post-traumatic stress disorder, mm-hmm. um, uh, family, spouse, alcohol, drug, all those problems yeah. uh, uh, exist yeah. in our profession, yeah. Yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. High stress. And, uh, exactly, yeah. Yeah. and so yeah. the majority of those are, exa- are caused by exactly what you thought. Yeah. Um, those things that the firefighters are exposed to for the duration of their career, mm-hmm. right? When you talk to the mental health professionals, they mm-hmm. talk about this, this slide tray of horrific things that the responders have experienced yeah. throughout their career and yeah. you never know when that slide's gonna pop up, right? Mm-hmm. So you go on a call, yeah. Yeah. a couple other slides pop in and it's end of days for the firefighter. Yeah. So yeah. we have really, really aggressive programs in place now um, to help identify those firefighters that need help and more mm-hmm. importantly, mm-hmm. to provide them with the help that they need. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we're really proud of as the incident management team after the debris flow is mm-hmm. that we had an opportunity to bring every responder in Santa Barbara County mm-hmm. that was present on the 9th mm-hmm. into a defusing event at mm-hmm. Oral Warren Showgrounds. Yes, yes, was it? yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, right, and so yeah. it was un- unprecedented. It had never occurred before in Santa yeah. Barbara County. And, yeah. and it, it, it provided an opportunity for them to all share their experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and that really, really helps move past that initial grieving, right? They saw yeah. things that you yeah. would hope that they would never see in their career. Not yeah. only did they see them, but they went out and conducted rescues in yeah. that, right? Yeah. Rescued over 800 people yeah. that first day. So yeah. just astounding what those 275 people went through. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing, that, that event, so I, I, I I want to talk more about just yeah, you yeah, and me. Yeah, I'm sorry, I but keep bringing no, it up. But, but that's a powerful moment because I, 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 you know, I've been doing the show for almost two years now, and one of my guests, John Paul Terry, we, yeah. he's, a, he's a great guy, yeah. news announcer, and he's a funny, very jovial guy. And we came on the show, and as soon as we got to that event, it's like I did, I saw him. At, I didn't. It was a different John, yeah. and we got we we dove deep into the the traumatic stress. After that, and when you when you talk to John, he's like he's like a, a good oh, dude, yeah. and his hope like oh. Chuck, that it sucked. I mean, it was messed up, and it's like oh, I thought we were gonna have a funny show, and, and it went really deep. And, yeah. and one thing I learned from Brother Monty Roberts, uh-huh. the famed horse sure. whisperer out yeah. in Solvain at the Flag is Up Farm, uh, we don't use the term post traumatic stress disorder. It is not a disorder because a disorder is something. If my abnormal. arm is short, that's yep. that's ab- I, I can't yep. fix that. This is but this is a post-traumatic injury, something that happened in a, in, a, in a traumatic arena, and it's an injury. And injuries can heal. And then I always say there's the post-traumatic issues. You have some issues that are sure. related to that. And then I learned from my issue that there's also post-traumatic growth that the growth comes out of it. You learn to be a better person, you learn to think, you learn, you just learn something happened, the daisy effect, the growth comes out of that. The opportunity. So, oh, it's amazing how, how we, and so that's, that's amazing when, um, it's, it's so much I can just, that's, a, that's, that part, that's gonna be the part two show. Okay. The part two show. <laughs> it's, a bi- it's a big topic. You were talking about the, the At Ease program. Sure. And so this is something that helped, helped me and my, my good buddy, Mike, Mike uh-huh. McGrew, Help form that. We were at. We had. We had a, the the death of a, an officer, um, passed away, and at the funeral, uh, or memorial, I should say, uh, we were at the the ex Fest Parker yeah. in the in the rotunda. in the rotunda there, and and my good buddy Cam Sanchez. As the family was walking out, there was this line of of 
of blue line of officers and they were all at attention as the family left and everybody was they were just they were just stoic and then as everybody walked out the family walked out chief kim said at ease and everyone like, and then you could this this line of 200 police officers the city's finest the best the best police officers in in the world or the Santa Barbara PD and when when he said at ease there was this wail of pain uh you could just hear it you could feel it and that 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 word at ease because after those type of instant ins, what's the word in Incidents. Incidents. Thank, thank you. Uh -huh. Incidents. <laughs> oh, at, when those things happen, the 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 firefighters, the the, the, the police, they don't really get a chance to go uh, and deflate and de-stress and and get right. that get that thing off their shoulder, get that off, and 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 that's that's something that I think that every agency has to employ now yeah. to be able to de-stress and be able to become human again. If you care about yeah. your folks, yeah. right? Yeah. And so the. Yeah. The, uh, so fire departments, police departments, the military, we're all the same, right? We yes. Don't, yes. We don't sell a product. Correct. We're not a business. No. We offer a service to the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, that's the only thing that we do. We yeah. offer this service to the community. And the only way that any of us deliver the service is through those people, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. the people are critically important. They are the only reason why we exist, yeah. the people that actually yeah deliver the service and so yeah. we have to invest in yeah. our people yeah. it's really really important that you know I'm glad that you brought that up about the post-traumatic recovery and the opportunity that that mm -hmm. represents and the, the uh, relief that mm -hmm. at ease so the military uh, did an interesting study mm -hmm. on post-traumatic stress and they found that immediately after a mission so a high-stakes mission in Iraq or Afghanistan the operators would come back in and they would peel off their battle rattle, right? The, the vest, the helmets, the knee pads. Mm -hmm. And then they would sit for about 15 minutes mm -hmm. and achieve that mental state that you just described, yeah. that at ease. Yeah. In other words, yeah. we were at risk, yeah. Yeah. now we're safe. Yeah. Yeah. Take 15 minutes to cleanse that out yeah. of you. Yeah. And so I think that there's great value in that, right? The police officers yeah. felt that relief, that yeah. at ease, yeah. because their duty yeah. to their fellow officer was complete. Yeah. And yeah. so they now they had time to grieve, yeah. Yeah. right? And so yeah. we need to be sensitive to that and yeah. provide it. It's, yeah. it's really, really important. Yeah. Our, the future of all of our organizations yeah. rests upon our ability yeah. to actually help our folks with this. Yeah. Yeah. So I always tell um, our folks, it's uh, what do you feel? Mm. And they will describe what they feel and is that normal? And I go, absolutely. Yeah. Only you decide what's normal, yeah. wow. right? Yeah. If you're having that response, yeah. that's normal yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Here's how I responded to that. Yeah. That's normal for me. Do you yeah. see the similarities? Yeah. Now let's move forward yeah. or yeah. let's go get help yeah. together yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. it happens yeah. to be. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. So, you know, I. Um, as as a as a as a pastor as a chaplain, I'm always there for other people, and I didn't know that I was jacked up. And when I say jacked up, I mean jacked up. And I was holding in all my grief, all my yeah. issues. And a buddy said, and you know the lie you tell people when they say, "How are you doing?" You smile. I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm gonna look extra good right now because somebody Ooh. asked. Yeah. Oh, and so I, and, and he called me out. He said, "No, you're lying. Okay, you're going you're not no, good. You're no, you snow. You need to get." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? I'm okay. I'm you the know? helper." And so we went and we sat in and and, and it was so amazing because all you know if, if you get the list and you read the, and you read down the list of all the things all the effects of oh, sleeplessness do and and every everything on that list was check like, them all oh, like oh 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 and there was like there's like a list of like 40 things and i checked off like 38 and like oh oh wait a minute yeah, you're fine but I, but i was yeah i was fine okay <laughs> and, and and then and then it really it that that there were some things that i had to deal with and it's like and so, because I was so used to wearing the mask, the mask became the, the face. And then once that face was on, it's like every day I stepped out. And I'm so grateful that I had people like my buddy and even my wife who called me out on crap. Like, no, nah. because what you know, when you as 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 the male, you have to be the strong one for the family. 
That's right. And I was, a, I was so stoic I, I was because I had to be that one. And then once I realized, okay, they're okay, and I've been called out, then I could, oh, and once that break, once that boom, right. oh, and I was like, and then I could finally let all the emotions, then it was okay to let the emotions out. Because yeah, you are wounded, yeah, you are hurting, yeah, you are grieving, yeah, you've got some anger issues, you've got some grief issues, you've got some sadness issues, and you don't know how to deal with it. What is the textbook for hurt? <laughs> right, so the only thing you can say, right? right? It's your hurt, right? And so, but it taught me how to, it taught me how to let go. It, it taught me also. This is the funny thing about it, Kevin. Um, it taught me how to open up myself, right? You know? And and cops, firefighters, they're so used to being we're the same. We come in and we come in and we say, but, but now nah, you're still human and. You got to so, have that. Yeah, the qu so, you know, kind of what you're describing yeah. is what happens when the helpers need help, yeah. right? Yeah. So in yeah. your your position yeah. as the chaplain yeah. and you're wearing all of yeah. these issues, everybody's issues, right, yeah. that they're bringing to you and the firefighters and the police officers, they're exactly the same. Yeah. You know, they're feeling the grief of the family. They're feeling yeah. um, the hope and they're also feeling the despair yeah. and the highs and the lows. Yeah. and. Yeah it's okay for the helpers to need help, yeah. right? I think all of us at some yeah. point in our career yeah. will find ourselves in that position. Yeah. The question is, yeah. is will there be somebody to call us out on it mm -hmm. if we're not able to do it on <laughs> yeah. our own? Yeah. Or uh, will that resource, if we are able to do that, will that resource be available to us? Mm -hmm. And I think in today's day and age, the resource yeah. is fortunately available for us, yeah. thanks to your, yeah. you and Mike, yeah. 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 right? Yeah. You know, yeah. not yeah. to, I know you're already, I don't want to make you feel, pump you up too right, much, but, but that, that's the most. Yeah. The vision, you had the vision, because you, you could see it, you could see it on the guys, you yeah, could see the, it. The program, the, yeah. the program that you guys yeah. have put together yeah. is, uh, it's beyond phenomenal, and yeah. the reason why is, it's not like all the other programs, right? Mm -hmm. There were critical incident stress debriefing programs in the early 90s, mm -hmm. um, but they weren't well thought out, they were a band-aid, you know, it wasn't well accepted, and you were seen as weak if you took, if you, uh, right. you know, if you engaged yeah. in those services. Yeah. And kind of the culture change that has occurred yeah. is, hey, this is okay, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. It's normal, yeah. Yeah. right? It's yeah. the things that you right. see, the things that you do. Yeah. Those are the things that are outside oh, norm. Yeah. Mm. They yeah. should be affecting yeah. you, yeah. right? And I think organizations yeah. have much more empathy now. Yeah. Um, to their folks on you, that. You made that statement, it, it should affect you. If It should affect you, but if it doesn't affect you, then I really got a question. <laughs> like, it, you know? So certain events, yeah, right? Yeah, and so that's yeah. the person that yeah. has to be called out, yeah. right? Yeah. That was me early in my career, right? Mm -hmm. It's a great pride in, uh, hey, I'm sorry that that happened to yeah. that person, but I'm glad that I was there to be able to help. That was my coping mechanism, yeah. right? And it's like, well, that was a horrible traffic accident, but I'm glad that I was there to be able to help, or that was a horrible fire. Yeah. But I was glad that I was on duty to be able to try to put it out. Because, you know, you train and you train and you train, yeah. Yeah. and you want to have opportunities. Or it's almost like the soldier, right? It's counterintuitive. What do we train the soldier for yeah. every day? Yeah. War. Yeah. None of us ever wants war, yeah. Yeah. you know? But the soldier is yeah. not disappointed when there's war, because there's an opportunity for them to go to battle, yeah. which is what they've been training for their whole life. So that was my coping mechanism. And once I realized that, hey man, that's not working because <laughs> in the first place that didn't have to happen to that person, right? You were prepared, but you can be prepared and not have to prove it. And yeah. so, you know, somebody uh, maybe, I don't know, 12 years ago called me out on yeah. that yeah. and took the finger and went, hey man, <laughs> what you just saw wasn't normal. It should yeah. have effect on you yeah. and it's not, something's yeah. wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh, I kind of suspected <laughs> that was the case, but you just validated it for yeah. me because I really, really respect you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm yeah. going to yeah. do a little soul searching, go home and talk to mama, uh, see if yeah. she's been holding out a little bit, and then yeah. move yeah. forward. Yeah. That's, she's like, yeah, know. finally, I was just letting you come to your conclusion, honey. But yeah, you do have you a do. problem, and here's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're good now. Onward and upward. We keep going. <laughs> yeah. That is great, Kev. Yeah. Uh, there, there, I've got a shot of, of, uh, of, of two of you guys. Um, they're riding on, on one of the units. Um, and, and they're really having some fun. Okay. But it, it, when I saw this um, um, 
Ed Puentes uh -huh. and one of the other guys, like his name slips my mind. Um, but it, it showed me like the true firefighter mode. I mean, he was like classic. These guys are like, they're in the firefighter mode. Like all they're, business? Yeah, they're all business. Yeah, it's going the other way. I'm trying to get the guys in the booth to go the other way. Okay. They're riding on a little <laughs> wagon. You guys are like 10 shows back. They had those guys right there. They're, they're working hard. These are the most hardest working firefighters you ever wanted to see, oh, man. Look at these brothers right here. Man. They're really, this is the, that's what firefighting oh, yeah. is all about, man. So all you kids out there watching, yeah, that's what fire, man, you gotta be able to just have some fun at the end of the day and then go do some troubleshooting. Yep. So this right. is, uh, yeah, so this is uh, Captain Jordan, yeah, mm -hmm. Captain Jordan, uh, Jordan Zaitsov <laughs> and Engineer Keith Powell. They're working. And now. as you can see, they're currently engaged in a, a serious emergency on uh, on their fire engine. That's a great, great picture. Where did you find that? I love it. That's awesome. I did my research and development. Yeah, right. those are two of our finest uh, boys. <laughs> are both, they are, I'm so, they are incredibly Highly trained. proud. They are, well, <laughs> those things aren't easy to ride. You've been on one lately? I've been on one with somebody else. Um, you guys have to do this for me. I don't know if you, if, if you ever cruise down State Street, but mm -hmm. there is one spot, and I may get in trouble for this, but it wouldn't be the, the first and if, yeah. if I'm, if I really do my work, it won't be the last. Okay. But the address, if I'm not mistaken, it's 613 State Street. Okay. 613. It's the hat shop uh -huh. on, on State Street. I'm familiar. There's a little lady that works there. Her name is Lori. Um, make sure that your the fire department weekly just just drive by and have like five or six guys go in there, full gear and just and just. Just love on her. Oh, a little. I just love on <laughs> Lori. She she is the biggest fan of firefighters, and I know she's watching watching no the show. No kidding. Go by. She said, "Chuck, don't do it." I'm doing it right now, Lori. Outstanding. And go by. I I I I got the guys from SB one day. Uh, she was talking trash, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I got the guys one day to roll up, and and she was able to. She shut down the shop for five minutes or whatever, and they put her on the wagon and gave her a ride a around, right the, around corner, the block. And it made her. Oh, it made her man. day. And it's amazing how many people out there really really admire admire what you guys do and so um, my this it, it's it's um, it's amazing how you know there's some positions that some some uh, vocations in life that that people just really really fall in love with and it's something about though that big truck when it rolls up and you guys right. are doing all the gear and all the clean shiny stuff on it sure. and sister Lori every whenever she sees it she just sticks her nose and she's just looking for a wagon <laughs> It's amazing. I'll so, make sure that I so, tell so the fellas. So Sister Lori, they're coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> she, Sister Lori has a wonderful store. I love the hat shop. I love the hat shop. I, I started working there one day. She was on a ladder one day. And she has a, a uh -huh. you know, that's yeah. high shelf. Oh, yeah. And she's trying to do some stuff. And I walked in there. I was like, girl, get down. Get You're going to fall. And I just started putting stuff on. So do you need a job? Can you just come in once a week and do the high stuff? <laughs> so I started rotate the inventory. <laughs> yeah. So it's just the high stuff for Sister Lori. Um, she's she's a great gal, um, and, and and not just her, but there's so many so many folks that have uh, those stories about how a, a firefighter helped them in in the worst moments, right? That's you know yeah. you got a, a tragedy going down, and when when they when when you guys roll up, even even the, the PD, worst moments of someone's life, and then that either that black and white rolls up, or you know that that unit rolls up, or that I mean it, it's like. Uh, Right. It's like, ah. Oh, it's, like, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, so we just graduated three um, mm -hmm. recruits, mm -hmm. five total, two from CARP mm -hmm. uh, and three from our department, okay. from our academy, and they just came on the floor. They're working on the engine now. And mm -hmm. so, of course, we celebrated their success mm -hmm. in finishing the academy with a little ceremony. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you said just reminded me of my remarks to the recruits when they finished the class. Mm -hmm. I talked about how this wonderful opportunity was in front of them. Mm. And what the opportunity is, Chuck, is that they're going to see our community members on their very worst day yeah. when yeah. they really need help. Yeah. And the beauty of their, their position is that they have the opportunity yeah. to have a positive impact on that person's absolute worst day yeah. to serve that person, to yeah. put that person's needs in front of their own. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're grateful to have that opportunity. 
right? You know, people frequently say, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I normally respond with, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to, to serve, yeah, yeah. right? And it's not, that's not a cliche or a saying, that's what we believe. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's what we do, it's why we exist okay. for that community member when they're having that worst day. I, I know I'm an, I, I'm a name dropper. I like oh. drop, I, li I like dropping names, and so okay. uh, I've got a young man friend. He just recently graduated from the from the fire academy. Uh, I'm going to encourage him to fill out an application and come see you. Okay? Yes, please. He's a good young man. He's the type of young man that you'd want to marry your daughter. Good, wow. young, good, solid young man. Uh, his name is Luis Gutierrez. So Luis. Go see Chief. Yes, okay. please, please come see I know me, you're a Luis good man. Uh, I know you're involved in firefighting. I know you're just a good guy. So go ahead and go ahead and do it, man. Do yeah. it. Uh, you, you, there's there's a reason why you went through that fire academy. Uh, there's a reason why you passed. There's a reason why we met. Um, so go out. You and and, and take you know. Tell him the name drop. Drop Luis, some names. Drop Luis. some names. <laughs> drop some names. Because <laughs> he's that kind of young man that I think he is. A, he is a person. And that's the kind of guy we look for, for those exactly. kind of positions that, that, that are humble enough to, to put themselves on the line, and then humble enough to do the homework to be, to be ready to get there. So yeah, just know prepared. Uh, um, uh, H-Bomb, I call him H-Bomb. He's with the, uh, I think he's with Santa Barbara Fire. Okay. Um, uh, James Heidelbaugh. Oh, I wonder, <laughs> great, great guy. Of, you know course, of course I know Good James. Good dude, yeah, right? Good yeah, guy, who <laughs> doesn't? He is, he is a phenomenal guy. guy. Those type of, and that's and, and I say that because those are some great dudes, great young men, and 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 so I I just knowing them like ah, you're just they're, born firefighter. I they're can just our see future. It. Yeah, those those guys are the future of our service. That's amazing, right? right? James. Yeah. Um, I haven't met Mr. Yeah. Gutierrez, yeah. but I look forward to meeting him. Good uh, people. H bomb there. Yeah. yeah. He is. Uh, you see him. Yeah. Right, and yeah. you interact with him, yeah. and you know it's going to be okay. Yeah. Wow, yes. Right? Yes. You, you know yes. that it's going to yes. be so much better. Yes. Right? Yes. So, soup, yes. that's really motivating. Yeah. It's, really, it's, really it's motivating. amazing, right? Yeah. It's amazing. Oh. You've been watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck and, 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 and the, the best police, please, <laughs> the best uh, fire chief in the world. Um, and so I want to thank you for being on the show, uh, Kevin. Uh, this is once again part one of a, I think 13, we're going to make it a 14 part <laughs> okay. series. Um, you've got about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. Uh, close, close the show out for oh, me. Just tell the people. I can't tell you how grateful I So I always enjoy visiting with you because mm -hmm. I take more than I give. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredibly motivating to be around people like you. It gives me um, just great, great joy and energy. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you, man. Thank, thank you, thank you, you thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking forward to you guys. Continue to watch the show. We're on so many times during the week. You can catch us on demand. You can catch us live. We, have, we are on so many times. I can't even repeat all the times that we're on. Um, but, and then stop by the station and yeah. say hello to the guys. Please. Uh, Montecito Fire, fire uh, District. Uh, up, up on.